Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. I got another Master Duel video for you. It's Monday, which means it is time yet again for another one of our weekly viewer specials. This is the, again, weekly series that we do, uh, usually every Monday, in which we watch games from you all, the viewers. Uh, I really like taking a, the time every week to uh, see what you're all up to as far as like cool decks uh, that we're building, especially once a new pack has come out. Uh, I love seeing what you're all cooking up there. Um, and it's just a good chance to, to uh, um, kind of come together a bit as a community, right? Um, I love hanging out with you all in the Discord server. Uh, if you're interested in joining, by the way, link is going to be in the description below. There's going to be an invite link there. Um, and if you want to submit games for the viewer special, you're definitely going to want to head into that Discord server because we have a whole channel dedicated there. Uh, the channel is even called Viewer Special Submissions, where you can put those games. Uh, also, if you're ever looking to chat with any uh, anyone who piloted one of the decks that we're, uh, we're featuring here, uh, that's also a great way to find them. Because I know a lot of people will ask a lot of time about you know details about the list or how the deck plays and uh, a lot of the time for viewer special i like to focus decks that i don't play as often if at all so um honestly a lot of the time the viewer you're watching is probably going to be the expert here um so again if we're going to just chat hang out and definitely if you're looking to submit games for the special go to check out the discord linked below um, if you are interested in submitting games that have never done so before, uh, the main bit of information that I need from you is your nine digit player ID, right? Uh, once I get that, then I am able to see all of the replays that you have publicly saved. Please do make sure that you are publicly saving them, uh, because if they are not, then I am not able to view or feature them. Um, as I said at the top of the video, we do this every single week, so uh, even if your game did not get featured, there is always the next week, and if you have 10 different replays you want to watch, or you want me to watch, you can do like 10 different submissions, that's definitely cool with me, uh, there's no limit in that regard, the only thing I ask is that you don't submit the same game like over and over and over again, right, um, but... No, we have never really had issues with that. So, yeah, but again, if you have 10 different duels, s send them all. Really, do it. Um, I also do watch pretty much everything that comes through. So, even if it doesn't get featured, just know that I did very likely watch it. Um, and, again, there's always the next week there, too. So, um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and start jumping right into these uh, games we have lined up here. Okay, our first game comes to us from Sinuspect, which is a great name. <laughs> I love it. Um, we are going to be watching them take Altergeist against Snake Eye. Hell yeah, let's go straight into it. Alright, looks like we are using uh, some of the new support here. The Perpetrator as well as the Malus, and I believe we will also end up having, yes, Adaminia in the extra deck here too. Good stuff. Uh, if you're ever interested in this overlay, by the way, there's going to be a link for that in the description as well. The untapped overlay. Um, very good stuff. Also lets you see lists of replays you watch. Very, very nice feature, among a myriad of others. Uh, there's an affiliate link in the description below. It's a free download, and using that link also supports the channel. So if you're interested, I would highly encourage you to check that out. But anyway, um, ooh, we're on the original. Oh, because they have a level one fire monster. Hey, <laughs> Level one fire monster, original simple spoil, says that is free real estate. So... Looks like we're linking off that new Altergeist Purator with the Bukiri in our hand to make Altergeist Hextia. Uh, love it. <laughs> I love it. This is, I won't lie, this is like one of the main reasons I built this deck is because it has Hex in its name. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I have my multi figures anymore, which is a little bit sad. I think I dismantled those at some point, but... Okay, Revitalization is going to let us normal summon the Malwis from our hand. Opponent is going to end up impairing the Malice, which would let us bring it back an Altergeist from the yard. Sort of a Debris Dragon style effect there. Um, but that's going to end up getting negated. Not too much to worry about that because we are still able to keep on linking up this time into the Prime Banshee. We can use the Hexy effect to add another Malice from deck to hand, which will allow us to summon it by its own effect. It does have that sort of poplar effect. Uh, we can then use the Prime Banshee to swap it out for a Multi Faker, which will let us get the Marionetta, which now we can bring back the Hextia. <laughs> this is like a. I, uh, this is a really cool gameplay loop that um, Altergeist has going on. Uh, I think it was during our last stream we had Abe submit an Altergeist replay there as well, uh, where we saw a somewhat similar gameplay loop here. So. That's cool, you know, I think the new support really did raise the ceiling of what Altergeist is capable of. Um, very cool to see there. Uh, protocol, a classic setting that with the call by before passing over to our opponent. So, 
Uh, again, keeping in mind, they are on Snake Eyes, so we're facing off against the top meta threat here with Altergeist. And I think we are going to end up still coming out on top here. Uh, Wanted is going to add DML for our opponent. Uh, we get to use our multi-faker effect because we protocoled. Normally we would be able to, but they have a call by here for their multi-faker in our yard. A little bit unfortunate, but not the end of the world by any means. Uh, it means we're not going to get a Silquitis here, so we're going to miss out on a Bounce, if, if I recall correctly. But... Okay, pitching Poplar for the Diabel. The Poplar and Diabel Fs are both going to... No, only the Poplar effects. No Diabel effects, really? That's wild. Hmm. So we get to pop so we get to call by the Poplar as well as that immediate see control of the Diabel here. So even if Diabel had activated, they must have original sin in hand already. Even if Diabel had activated, they wouldn't have anything to send off of it. Okay, they still have plays. They're gonna sneak eye ash. But we have the Altergeist Protocol, <laughs> which negates. Uh, the Altergeist Protocol, for those who are not familiar with the card, let's go ahead and read that here. Uh, yeah, you can, your opponent activates the monster effect, you can send an Altergeist to card to control the graveyard to get the activation if you do destroy it. So, pretty easy way of dealing with that. And then they only have one card left in hand at that point. I'm still a little surprised they didn't try to activate Diabelle's effect here. Like, at all. Like, I would think that even if you already have Original Sin in hand, which I'm assuming was their last card, you would still want to set the Wanted from deck, because there's no reason not to. But, uh, either way, um, you know, what looked like a fairly minimal Altergeist board, and it kind of was, because we did get Disrupted, too, uh, was still able to completely shut down anything that Snake Eye was capable of uh, in this case. So, um, yeah, I mean, Altergeist is very easy to overlook decks like this, but you definitely should not underestimate them. Uh, that's for sure. Thank you very much for that submission. Let's take a look at our Snoozpect. <laughs> How can I forget your name? Of course, it's not only right here, it's such a great one. Thank you, Snoozpect, for your submission. It's super appreciated. Uh, let's take a look at the next duel here. All right, so our next duel is going to come to us from NAJN, um, who I think I featured before. I was trying to remember with Snoozpect, because I tried to get new people who I never featured before into the rotation. I don't think Snoozpect have been featured before. I think NAJN has, but anyway. Um, they're gonna have a game uh, with dinosaurs, so let's go ahead and check that out here. Yeah, dinos, I've been seeing a lot, especially in the Challenger Cup. I talked about this in my, uh, or will talk about it in my tournament report video that I've already recorded, but is going up tomorrow. Uh, in the Challenger Cup that I topped this past weekend on Saturday, I ran into a lot of dino decks. Uh, Lars, it's, we got um, dino decks out here in Forest with Lars. Also, are we playing a coal de zone? We're playing a coal de zone. Uh, for those who are not familiar with this card, it is a field spell that says if this turn player summons exactly one monster, destroy it, then if you do, the control of that monster summons a mass token to their field, which you can't attack directly with attack and defense equal to the monster that left the field. I uh, can use that effect once per turn, and we'll use the field to destroy all mask tokens. So, looks like we're using this as a way to help pop our babies if we open them. Uh, this is also just a really cool card, and like, the way, I don't know, it was played in the anime, I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, played by one of my favorite anime characters, Sherry LeBlanc, but anyway. Uh, ooh, so Tidon here, our opponent is going to have a uh, Max C, so not much we're really able to... I mean, this Hayden and Gerald doesn't look like it had like too much it was able to do, but yeah, especially under Max C, so... Okay, opponent's going to be on VS here, we're definitely going to use our own Max C in response to their Stake Your Soul, uh, which thankfully they do not have an answer for, so... Oh, there's something Caesar? Wow. Okay, so Fossil Dig, that's a great draw. We get to replace their Caesar with the Akolda Zone. Except they're going to use the Protection Effect. Huh? Okay, so they just... Alright. I don't really know. I guess maybe they just needed another Vanquish Soul monster on the field. I don't really know. I guess there's also no reason not to, right? Use the Protection Effect there. Because Akolda Zone is only once per turn. I'm also a little surprised that they normal summon to Mad Love, and I guess they just didn't have much else to do in hand, but like... So they stick your soul revealed back C, right? Uh, no, they revealed Pantera. Gotcha, okay. So yeah, they must just not have... This makes sense. So like, they must not only not have Raisin, but also a fire to access Raisin? I would just think you would want to go into Raisin off of Stick Your Soul if possible, but... I'm not a VS player, so maybe not. Um, but it kind of seems like they really only had access to Earths there, which I think is the weakest of the attributes among the Vanquish Soul cards. Because it's really just Pantera and Caesar, right? Uh, for Fire, you have Raisin and Xiaolong, which is phenomenal. For Dark, you have Maglev and Borgia, which is pretty good, too. Anyway, 
Um, okay, so we have our mask token, and we're going to fuse it with the... Oh, we're making Guardian Chimera. That's right. You mentioned that you're utilizing Guardian Chimera in your build, uh, which is kind of wild. Um, I mean, maybe it isn't. I don't know. I, I, again, I'm not the most knowledgeable about dinos, but... Um, okay, so they're going to reveal Pantera, Mad Love. And that's it. Yeah, they don't have a fire, do they? Alright, so Snow Devil. Yep, summoning the Pantera. And the Mad Love. Guardian Chimera is going to draw us the Archosaur. Pop a couple of their cards there. And they're they're going to get to add the Dust Devil, but that's fine. We have an Overraptor now, so we're, we're eating pretty good here. Uh, they do get to bounce it. Looks like they do have a Borger as well as the Valius. So they must have just drawn that Borger there. Yeah, bouncing the Overraptor, which still does proc, so we'll get to summon the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Summoning that by banishing two out of our yard. Uh, the Kaito Terra. Oh, that's why we're on Polly. Oh, I see. Okay. Right, so Valius bouncing the Mad Love to summon itself. They don't have a fire, though, so they can't destroy a card necessarily. Or draw a card here either, right? No, they do get draw because you only need a dark for that. So now they might have a fire. Now they might be able to pop a card, but it's... That's, like, decently likely. I don't know. I was going to say it's not the most likely, because it's only one draw, but if they've already drawn so many cards without, uh... Hold on, 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 hold on. So we're going to attack directly turn a special summon. You can only take the effects of Horn Source once per turn. This card is Fusion Summon. You can place one field spell from your deck or your... Ah, that's right, play a Cold Design. Okay. During your main phase, you can immediately have six resolves. Normal Summon, one to Dinosaur or a Dragon Monster. Oh, no, we just summoned the Overraptor from our hand. That's cool. Moving to battle phase, Tyranno gets to battle multiple times, so we can take out their stuff, and then I just we swing in for lethal here, right? Isn't this just game? Hell yeah. That's really cool. That's not the way that I've seen dinos, like <laughs> I don't know, it's it's interesting because I it, I never realized how many different ways there were to build dinos. Or maybe this is the way that dinos are generally built, and I'm just experiencing this side of the engine for the first time. But um yeah, none of the people I saw playing um in the cup were doing any of these uh, fusion shenanigans. That's really cool uh, that you can utilize polymerization in such a way with stuff like the uh, Kaito Terra uh, and going into like Horned Saurus and, and Guardian Chimera. That's a really cool build. Uh, thank you so very much for sharing it. Um, let's look at the next duel that we got lined up here. Okay, now this is somebody who I know has submitted before, Toad Et. Uh, Toad Et is going to have a game here um, where she is on Adventure, or not Adventure, Plunder. Uh, as always, ever, but paired with the new Illusion Monster. So, very eager to see how this plays out. Yeah, I see the Gazelle, the Cornfield Codal, Burfamet, Mirror Sword Knight. We got it all here. Uh, we are playing against... I think, is this Rescue Ace? We'll see the... Oh, wow, we opened the... Three Whitebeard. Full playset there. Ah, it's Sky Striker. Okay. Interesting that Sky Striker... I don't ever understand Sky Striker decks that choose to go first. Like, I don't know what, what are you doing? Like, why are you summoning Kagar or Hayate? You can't attack. Um, okay, they do get to add the Roz here, or Rose, rather. Uh, engage for the, well, I mean, they summon the Hayate because of the Ray effect. I guess that makes sense. If they had run the playset of, like, a three. Yeah, so now Kagar, you can wheel back the Engage. What did they add with the first Engage? I wasn't paying attention. They added, what do I care? That makes sense. Is this going to be Shark Cannon? Yep. Oh, no, another Widow Anchor. Okay. All right, and then this is Shizuku, right? Makes sense. So, set three, two of those are Widow Anchors, adding the multi roll during the end phase. Okay. All right, we have the Plunders, we have the Illusions, and we're leading with the Illusions. We're going to start by normal summoning Gazelle, the King of Mythical Claws. Uh, that's going to try to get negated, but we have the Quick Play Chimera Fusion in response, which can fuse away your Gazelle, so that way it's no longer on the field, and they were, therefore won't get negated. Going to fuse that with the... Ah, because they're fiends! That makes sense. Yeah, that's why the, the Plunders work so well with this archetype, because the uh, Illusion slash Chimera archetype actually does care quite a bit about fiend monsters. So, uh, okay, opponent is revealing their non-Widow Anchor card it is a Royal, called by the Grave. Wow. Uh, so Call By is going to end up banishing the uh, Burfamet? Yeah, the Burfamet there, which the uh, Chimera was trying to uh, do something with. Oh, no, no, the, the Chimera was just activating its effect to send a random card during the end phase. Got it, got it, got it. So 
All right, now we can go into our plunder stuff. We're gonna activate the field spell and use that to ultimately lead into the golden hair there along with uh, the, the bird, <laughs> Black Eyes. It's funny, for as many people uh, in the Discord server that play Plunder, I, I still just don't know this deck very well at all. Uh, most because I haven't played it yet myself, but um, maybe someday. I'm not opposed to it. There's just always other decks. Okay, that's kind of what it comes down to a lot of the time, because I get a lot of requests, naturally, of course, uh, to play like a lot of specific decks. Like, um, you know, just people being like, hey, will you ever play this deck I like? Will you ever play this deck I like? Um, and it's like, you know, if... if if stuff did not cost crafting materials, I'd be playing a lot more different decks, but... You know, you can only play so many. We can only craft so many, really. This is the real thing. <laughs> um, anyway, we're moving to battle here. Uh, we get to negate our opponent's raid, which is pretty big, honestly. That's pretty huge, keeping them off of that. Uh, it's definitely going to limit what they can do on the follow-up. Especially because we're going to send a card from their hand during the end phase. Ideally, it won't be multi-roll, because multi-roll doesn't do anything by itself, so... Ah, beautiful! It was... Oh my god, Hornet Drones? Are you kidding me? That's phenomenal! That's like the best possible rip I think we could have had. Oh my god, that's ridiculously good. Revealing nothing off the field spell either, so yeah. Now they just have the, the multi-roll and two unknowns, it's like, it's so totally fine. Right, we're gonna get the synchro ship. Multi rolls activating here, but we are going to banish it uh, as well as summoning out a plunder monster from the deck, right? Is that what this does? No, it adds it, not summons. Okay. Rose, we actually did know one of their other cards. So the unknown, the, the face down spell trap is the only unknown card left. Oh, they're not even gonna let us resolve the Chimera fusion. <laughs> oh, that was, that was pretty darn good. That was good. Um, you know, normally I do three duels, but it's been a little bit of a short video. Let's do one more. Let's just do one more. All right, our final replay for this video comes to us from Mr. PLJ. Mr. PLJ has a game here versus Naha, or Naja. Uh, we're playing Rescue Ace here, which is a deck I've already played, but not this particular variant. The main deck looks like it's pretty much, you know, the same style of Rescue Ace deck, but take a peek at the extra here. Yeah, PLJ is on the Terahertz package, which uh, is an optional extra package you can play with Rescue Ace that gives you uh, a little bit more disruption on your end board. Let's take a look at it here. So uh, we led with, what, Bonfire for Poplar for the original Sin. Uh, gonna leak off the Poplar for Link Karibo. Uh, and then put the Poplar, of course, into the spell Trap Zone. Tan's looking really good, actually. Get our original Sin away the Poplar for Hydrants from deck. I like doing the Wanted D... Well, obviously you would Bonfire Poplar slash Wanted Diabelle before your main plays anyway, but another nice thing about doing that is that uh, sometimes you can trick your opponent into thinking you're a Snake Eye deck and, like, beat them in with those responses, but... Oh, yeah, we got the Preventer, we got the Turbulence, we're setting for, this is like, all the classic stuff Rescue Ace wants to do, but we're going to be doing quite a bit more than just this here, too. Uh, so we got our four set, we're going to use the uh, Hydrant to help us activate the Alert here, to add an Impulse. Uh, now we're linking off Link Karibo and Preventer for Reproticus. Ah, uh, you always know you're up to some shenanigans when this card comes out, so... Oh, uh, we can summon back our Banished Airlifter, change it into a Cybers monster. Now that will let us link it off for the Link Decoder, which we can now link alongside the Reproticus in order to summon out our Protect Code, Protect Code Talker. Uh, now Link Decoder is going to bring itself back. We can then link off the Protect Code with the Hydrant now for uh, Firewall Dragon, I believe? Yes, regular Firewall Dragon. Uh, protect Code Talker. Uh, can banish the other two materials in order to bring itself back. Now, Firewall Dragon, because a monster summoned to its zone, can bounce the Preventer in our yard back into our hand. We're then linking off the three Link monsters to summon out our Terahertz, right? Terahertz, of course, going to send the D save worm for that spell trap negate. And we still have the Preventer, by the way, alongside Turbulence here for that extra disruption. So. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, like, it doesn't, you don't need to do anything else in your main deck different. It's just your extra deck uh, in order to get this line. We're up against Makonko, by the way. Uh, and, like I said, it ends you on more negates. Not only the D save worm you send on your turn, 
But then we also have the Mirror Logic Aggregator as well, which looks like it is about to come out here. Uh, we have the Rescue bringing back the Hydrant as well. Boom, and then there is the Aggregator. This will negate whatever is summoned off of the uh, Quick Way spell, which is of course going to be the level 6 Ritual, right? Aggregator negating there. Uh, that's pretty huge. It means no equips from the yard. Uh, it also means no reflected battle damage this turn off of that as well. Oh, and we even have the called by for the uh, the Mayawashi Dory target. We're, we're looking so good here. And we still have the D save worm in the yard too, which is probably going to come up like right now, I imagine. Oh no, we don't have to use it just yet. Oh, there it is. Okay, we're waiting until the effect activates in case they had another copy. That's smart. There goes their Aberesque, or Arabesque. And yeah, they, they can't do anything at all, again, because the Ohime is like straight up negated. Yeah, we can just turn that face down, not to worry about it anymore. Just going straight into battle phase here, because, you know, <laughs> our, our Terror Hurts is enough to get there by itself. That's another, another pro of Terror Hurts, of course, is that uh, if it lives through the opponent's turn, which it's very likely to do, uh, it becomes much easier to then OTK them on the crackback on the follow-up turn there. So, thank you, PLJ, for showing off that variance. Thank you, everyone who submitted. Again, as always as ever, um, I can't do it without you all submitting games. So, um, again, just huge, huge thanks to all of you. I love this series, too. So, the fact that you're all helping to keep it going by submitting the duels, i uh, love to see it. Love to see it every time. Um, but that's all the time we have today. Let's just move now to our outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. That means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for it in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description. One of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch vods as well as some additional uh, non yu gi -Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.